So next up we have uh, Jean-Francois who's going to tell us uh, about some constraint programming work uh, that he has been uh, doing in Julia. Okay, so uh, I'm just starting and I already have some uh, time constraints. So we are already learning something. Uh, okay, so joke aside, um, I will try to introduce uh, the constraint, constraint paradigm, uh, sorry, constraint programming paradigm um, because it's my kind of uh, to-go example for uh, today's presentation. Okay, so the idea is like um, we can uh, model uh, problems with a high level of abstraction that is close to natural language. Uh, for that, we uh, define a set of variables uh, usually uh, discrete. We have a set of domain over the variables and we have a collection of constraints, so predicates over the variables. Optionally, we can have uh, objectives that can be uh, provided. If you want to know a bit more, we uh, we had a talk about uh, this kind of things two, two years ago at GXON. Okay, so this slide is for people watching online that can pose and uh, see some example. I will give uh, one for uh, local people. Okay, so this is a Sudoku. Most people should know about it, but the idea is we have a, a grid. We want to fill it with numbers from one to nine, and we have some constraints like each line, each column, and each block need to be uh, to have uh, different values. Um, so if we look at uh, one example uh, using uh, jump, that was prior to uh, 1.x, so it's uh, all code, but anyway. Mm -hmm. What we can do with constraint programming is uh, expressing something that says, okay, all the variables uh, in my constraints are uh, different. So then it's become very, very short to express Sudoku, which is just basically all different for variables on the rows, all different for variables on the columns, and the same for uh, blocks. Okay. And the motivation for uh, today's presentation is like often, not always, but often, efficient solvers expect more uh, complex methods to provide um, additional efficiency. And uh, it's difficult when you're not a technical user. So what we, we did with constraint learning is uh, an interface to different tools that were designed to smooth that trade-off. Uh, the first one is uh, compositional networks that we presented two years ago. And the, the recent one is uh, Kubo constraints. So thank you, uh, Joachim, for introducing Kubo just before. Uh, in both cases, we try to learn automatically uh, smarter things uh, just from predicates. Mm, so the application of uh, constraint learning are not only for constraint programming, but uh, because that's my specialty, we are currently focused on it. Um, give a small example based on uh, one of the solver uh, I uh, maintain. Um, so it's a constraint-based local search solver. It's a family of solver or meta heuristics that uh, model things as a constraint program. And then we kind of use a local search method around the, under the hook. And if we do it in a naive way, like we, we count the number of constraints that are violated, we have the thing on the left. So we have a lot of plateaus, and our local search method will just go around, go around, go around, until maybe, if you have enough luck, you will converge. What we want to do is something a bit smarter, like on the right, we want to say, okay, this constraint is violated, but by how much? Can you give me something a bit more uh, qualitative? And uh, we can have something like this, where we basically can uh, converge quite, uh, quite fast. Um, and we learn those uh, more qualitative function uh, from the predicate. So this is just a small experiment. The blue part is actually the um, naive solver. So 
And the three others are like uh, the ICN, so orange and green is uh, our uh, composition network package. And the purple one is a state of the art. So it's like different order of magnitude with a naive one. And we are, well, kind of close to the best thing. Okay, so, okay. Um, to go a bit further, uh, why we want to do that? Um, there is a belief, I'm not entirely convinced myself, but I'm still going for it, that um, most of the constraints in constraint programming can be decomposed into uh, a set of core constraints, uh, which are uh, defined in the XCSP3 format. So here is a curated list. And uh, after some uh, analysis, we were able to, to see that there are only a, a few types of parameters like uh, Boolean, uh, dimension, ID, uh, language, uh, operators, pair of variables, and uh, values. Uh, currently, what I present today is working super, super, super fast and very efficient for one, uh, for two cases. When we have a parameter as a single numerical value and when we have no parameter. So we still have a lot of work, but still, uh, we went for a second tool. Uh, so this one is um, about learning automatically uh, Kubo matrices from uh, constraint programming predicates. And uh, we hope to actually uh, integrate it with uh, Kubo.gl uh, later on the, the road. But anyway, uh, so the idea is like uh, Kubo is getting popular and uh, we can run things on uh, quantum devices or quantum inspired devices. And uh, what we can do, so we have a set of variables from uh, x1 to x4. We uh, binarize them in a way or another. And uh, we try to look for a pattern, actually combination of pattern that uh, we can uh, recognize. And then for uh, this uh, channel constraint, we were able to find that those uh, four patterns on the, the right we're able to make uh, a fitting uh, Kubo matrices. And, uh, well, it works. So, the idea that we are uh, shipping with constraint learning is um, something where uh, the user defines an optimizer, so it's slightly inspired by a uh, jump, but just slightly, um, that uh, is like a subtype of a abstract some plugin optimizer, and uh, we, we can uh, plug it into the compositional networks, Kubo constraints, or maybe future other plugins. So for instance, uh, for compositional network, we use, uh, we have a genetic algorithm optimizer and a constraint-based local search that are uh, currently working. Uh, for uh, Kubo constraints, we have a gradient descent and a CBLS, and uh, we hope to, to add some more. Uh, the perspective for the future are basically to cover uh, all core constraints, as I, I have shown before. Really, really, we want to integrate with the uh, other related ecosystem package, uh, jump, kubo.gl, I need to update my slides now, uh, etc. And uh, we want to add uh, more plugins and more optimizers. Uh, for those interested by the theory behind and the experiments, we have uh, two related papers that appeared this year, so um, please have a look.